up, everybody? We just wrapped up the podcast with Tyler, aka Vukum, the watch seller of New York City. Had a blast, learned a lot. If you guys like or are into watching people watch watches, um, this episode is going to be for you. Like, subscribe, share. It means a lot to us. A little goes a long way. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the Johnny Drinks Podcast. <laughs> Look at you! You got yourself a mic. Oh, you didn't know? Just in case you, just in case you have any questions. <laughs> Hell yeah! This is Joe. So if he if he hey, chimes in, you what's your name again, bro? I'm Dan. Joe, Dan, Dan Joe, James, James, Tyler. Are yep. you so last names? Mikorski. Buckley. Mikorski. Buckley. Yeah. Mikorski, Mikorski. Buckley. Not S K Y. So this is the Vukum family, right? The Vukum tree. Explain yep. the Vukum tree for us, please. Uh, the way it breaks down, it goes: uh, John Buckley, Tyler Mikorski, James Buckley. Obviously, have the same last name. They're related. I am not related. I'm like a neglected stepson. Okay. Um, but yeah. So now, James, how did you get involved with James Buckley? Because that's where the James Buckley brand started, right? So the story with James Buckley yeah. is I met James when I was seven and I was in the bathroom. I was taking a shit. And yep, in first or second grade, second or third grade. I think probably. I think second grade. Second grade. So I was in second grade taking a shit uh. and forgot to lock the stall door. Typical behavior for me. And kid comes storming in. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. He's like, oh, my bad. Walked out. Didn't see him again for a week. Then I saw him in the hallways or maybe, what do we have a class together? Yeah, Miss Kravitz or something like that. Miss Hampton. Something, something like that. Yeah. I'm losing brain cells. I mean, you were seven, so I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we saw each way, other the next week. We saw each other the next week and I was like, oh. Hey, he's like, hey, want to be friends? I'm like, yeah. So then we had a play date, as you do. And then his mom made me mac and cheese and chicken tenders. And was game over. My parents came to pick me up. The parents clicked. And then that was it. Wow. So then you, obviously, years later, you were best friends since seven years old. Years yeah. later, got were just intrigued by what his dad was doing. And what he so, were, or... yeah, uh, I was... I was about 16 to 17 when I started realizing that I was not going to go to college, but I was, I still had to because my parents wanted me to go. So I, I was, you know, thinking of other things that I can do and I was always entrepreneurial, like minded. So mm. I would always do things. I worked in flea markets. I worked different jobs. I was selling stuff on the side, uh, just different things. Stuff. Yeah. Stuff just, you know, gum. Yeah, whatever you could think of, just stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was always selling stuff and just, you know, always, I always liked making money. It was just like a passion of mine. You know, some kids like playing baseball, some kids like wrestling. Yeah. I just loved making money. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I got started, how I got started with that. Um, You know, when I started moving towards the college days, when they were fast approaching, you know, end of senior year of high school. I was already going to Stockton University in, in South Jersey. Oh, okay. Yeah. just went there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was already going there and, you know, I, I knew I wasn't going to last. I just, it was just a matter of how long I was going to stay. Right. So it was the summertime and it was actually a couple of weeks before school ended. I started taking off from school once or twice a week because I had sick days left over. So I would go with his dad into the city and that's really just how it started. I didn't have any interest. I didn't even know what he did. I just thought he was a jeweler. Like I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know that it was watches and specifically watch parts that he that his dad did. Right. I so just thought he was jewelry. You you said you had this passion for making money at a young age or like high school time. Oh, super young. I remember when I was eight years old. I went to his dad and I'm like, Yo, like I know you make bread. I want to make bread. At eight years old. Eight years old. Swear to God, he gave me uh, these these watches that were rubber swatches that were like eight dollars or ten dollars and he's like give me five dollars on each watch you sell and you could just keep whatever's left so i was going into school and i was selling these rubber swatches and i, I don't understand why i was like that i just wanted to make money i don't know why that's got to be great in your dna man that's and you yeah. know i think a really good lesson i'm assuming that he taught you early on was like small profit because hypothetically yeah, if i were to get volume, involved, small profit right volume small profit yep. versus i would i would want to look for high profit off of every sale yeah, and I see a lot of your videos that that's what intrigued me. You weren't trying to fool anybody by saying, I made 10 grand off this watch. Yeah. You're like, made a couple of hundred bucks today, close it up. That's, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Lost Better than bucks. losing. Yeah. Right, exactly, Sometimes exactly. I lose money. Sometimes you lose money. And then you celebrate your big wins. But like you said, overall, it's about these like small victories. Yeah, just compounding small wins. Okay. So you, 
were intrigued by just selling things as a younger, the eight years old is insane. The fact yep. that you're even thinking about this stuff. Yeah. I, don't, school, I, don't, I really don't know why. I, I don't know why. It's so weird to think about too. Cause like what eight year old thinks like that? Well, I think it, at eight years old, it's less about like, I'm making money. Cause you don't really understand what money does for you in real mm-hmm. life. It's just, I would assume the excitement of I'm going to, I'm going out to achieve this goal. Yeah. And I achieved this goal. That was really fun. Mm-hmm. And making money is a game of sorts when you're older. It's just now it means a little bit more when you have to make money. Yeah. You know, so back in the day, you could have been trading fucking coins or yeah. toys. doesn't matter. Yep. But you just found a passion for what is now money. Yeah. Um, college days, you knew you weren't going to last long. When did you stop? You, you drop out? You <laughs> yeah, I dropped out three weeks in. Three weeks in? Yeah. Ah, you were so close, man. <laughs> yeah, so close to that first semester. I'll tell the story real quick, just on the outside. Literally two weeks in, he's like, fuck. <laughs> calls me. He's like, buck, like panic. Down bad. I don't think I can do this. I'm yeah. just like, what do you mean? You do- Why? He's like, I can't do this shit. I'm just like, okay, just try and stick it out. Maybe a semester, see how it goes. Buck, I can't do this. I'm like, okay, just give it another week or so. Just try and get your thoughts right. And a week later, he was dropped out. And you weren't in college at this point? No, I, I wasn't in college. I didn't go to college. You were that already. Did not go to college yet. I went, got you. I was trying to do my own thing, to be honest with you. Oh, you were? Yeah, I was doing like photography and like videography, like for myself. Yeah. And then I have a whole story as to why I started doing like the trading and stuff like that. But right. that's kind of where I was at at the time. And you didn't feel like, okay, I'm just going to follow my dad's footsteps. Like that I actually a, didn't want to at all. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Because when I was younger, like 10, 11, 12, like I was going to the city with him, like doing grunt work. I was, you know, wiping down the calendars. I was going to get lunch for everybody. I was yeah. going to the bank to deposit checks. Like I was doing all that, like grunt work is what yeah, you yeah. say. And then as you get older, it's like, okay, like how do I take this to another level? Like you can't do that forever. So you start sure. to pick up things. You start to be told, okay go run up and down the street. Don't come back until you sell whatever it is we give you. Okay, Mm -hmm. fine. You get that done. You're like, okay, like that's how you make money. Then it's like, you have to learn the stuff. So it takes like a long time to really get there. I had no interest in it. I didn't want to do it. I always had an interest for photography. That was like what I liked, but um, it's kind of funny how that's how it was for me. And then fast forward, now I do the stuff for you with the content and the photography yeah, and, and the videography the and stuff. So it's like, now it's like full that's circle right. for me. But wow. yep. for me at first, it was like, no, I want to no part of the business at all. And you're helping your friend chase his dreams, man. Look ah, at you. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, buddy. Gotta love that. Now, I mean, cause, so I've done that. I didn't, I've never traded watches, but I had a very wealthy friend of my dad's was like my neighbor. And he's like, oh, do me a favor. Go run this watch to this watch guy in New York city. Here's the address. And now me, I think it was like 20, 21, maybe I'm picturing a jewelry store, like a nicer spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get to the door <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? I'm like, is this? I'm like, is this the, I like get buzzed in. I'm walking up these flights. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sketchy it's staircase. Sketchy, yep. dude. I'm like, is anybody in here? Like I knock on the door. There's like three guys in the back. They're like, come in. They close the door on me. Yep. I'm like, am I about to get hit? Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. I hand the watch. He's like, um, I can give you this much for it. Uh, okay. I was like, dude, what are you talking? I'm not negotiating anything. This isn't yeah. even my watch. I'm like, I'll take it. And then I, I asked, I was like, here's the money. And he's like, okay, yeah, cool. So I didn't know if that was scary or not. Was it intimidating for you guys at first? Nah, <laughs> not really. His dad will say I was intimidated, but I was more <laughs> so. I, well, actually, you know what it is? It was because I was naive and young and I didn't know the real like dangers of the world, I guess. So I, in the time, wasn't scared. But Probably when been. I look back at it, I'm like, maybe I should have been. been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause the street is, is a fucking sketchy, grimy place. That street in particular, mm-hmm. just the yeah. things that happen there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he, his dad would warn me all the time and be like, just careful, be careful. Don't do this. Don't do that. And I would do it anyway. You know, just, you know, you gotta learn yourself, but you know, there weren't, there weren't many instances that anything happened. So not uh, many. Well, n- nothing really. Nothing. Has anything ever, what street? Uh, 47th Street. Okay. Yeah, anything, Diamond District. Anything shiesty happened to you? No. Really? No. In all your years of training watches, nobody's ever ran up on you? No. Even, so, I mean, I want to get into, like, why you started making content, but nobody recognized you down the street and saying, oh, that's... Oh, that's now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, all constantly. You can't even, I can't even walk, even here, anywhere. I can't walk anywhere. It's really? Like supermarket, yeah. What made you want to start making content? Um, like, typically, you get stuck with a watch. Uh, like, let's say, uh, you know, I buy 10 watches. I might get stuck with two of them, right? Um, those two watches you get stuck with, you don't really want to take a loss on them. Mm-hmm. Beforehand, I would take a loss of them. I wanted to have an audience on my Instagram. And I knew that TikTok was the way to funnel people to follow me on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I wanted to have an audience on my Instagram. So if I had those two watches that didn't sell, I'd be able to just post them on Instagram and hopefully they'd sell and I'd even, I'd make money because it's, it's a different market. That, that would be the retail market. 
The wholesale market is right. what I was doing. Yep. So I was only selling to other dealers. So if I sold like eight out of the 10 watches to dealers, I'd be stuck with two, realized I overpaid on the two watches that I had, but now I'd have this audience to fall back on. So that was my goal. I was never trying to get big on TikTok. I was just trying to build up enough people on, on my funny? Instagram. That's yeah. crazy. Man. That's that, that was the only goal in mind. Okay, so all right, let's take a step back. All right, what's up everybody? Hope you're enjoying this episode of the Johnny Drinks Podcast. Quick reminder, Johnny Drinks Crew Next, still on sale, limited inventory. So if you wanna grab one, hit that link in the description. But for now, keep enjoying the rest of this episode. Your first day on the job, First day on the job. job. What does that look like for you? Um, I'm trying to think because I can remember the specific day. If you just give me one second, take your time. Um, trying to think. Trying to think. Okay, so it was. You had a good memory. Yeah, no, because I remember specific like flashbacks and shit. That's funny. So it was in May. It was a few days before my 18th birthday, and uh, I I drive in with him. His dad's giving me the whole you know the speech like you know. Uh, this is what to expect. This is how you act. This is what you do. This is what you don't do. This is not how you act. This is, you know, the usual. And it, here you have to be very uh, precise in, in kind of what you're doing because there's a whole system involved. It's not just about buying and selling a watch. It's about not getting shot and robbed. It's about not, you yeah. know, getting finessed. It's, it's, there's, there's so many different things. Uh, you know, not ruining your reputation in the business. You know, something you do when you're 17 or 18 will follow you into when you're 25 or 30. So there, there's a whole process to how to do it. So I remember uh, getting picked up by his dad and we're driving in and he's giving me the whole spiel. Then we get to the city, uh, we park and we start walking like two miles. His dad parks like two miles away. That was back <laughs> then. Uh, we're, we're sprinting. His dad walks faster than I've ever seen anybody yeah. walk. Big so, guy? Uh, looks big on camera. Yeah, he's you know bigger guy, but yeah. his walk—I mean, he doesn't move. He moves fast. Fast, fast rides. Fast. I've never seen. I've never like seen this. like it before. And I'm 17 at the time. His dad's like probably what 55 back then. No, like oh, actually, yeah, he's 60 now. He's gonna be 60. Yeah, 53, so 54, 55, like in that yeah. range. Yeah. So you know, I'm like, oh, you know, we're gonna walk nice. No, we're sprinting. I'm like, yeah. fuck. So I'm I'm running to keep up. So that was that. We get to the street. He's saying hi to all these people, stopping in all these different exchanges and booths and introducing me to all these people. And these people are just looking at me like, stop. Like they're not giving me the time of day, not even really saying hi to me. He'll be like, oh, this is, this is Mikorsky. And they'll be like, cool. And yeah, then they would just yeah, keep yeah. talking. Uh, so there was that. Then we got to, to his actual business, which was in 66 West 47th street, which is an exchange. Uh, we sit down He's like, oh, there, there's a seat for you. And the way it was shaped was there was like a, I'm trying to think. There was the booth like this. And then there was almost like, you know how an attic or how, uh, you know, in Harry Potter, you ever watch Harry Potter where the kid lives under the yeah, stairs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of how it was. There was a little yeah. space cut okay. out where there was a safe and then a small chair. There was about this much room. And uh, I sat there next to the safe and he showed me how to open the safe and shit. Oh my God. And then- uh, from there, I think he's just like, follow me that day. It wasn't any selling. It was just kind of learning the vibes and, and get, and getting everything down. Yeah. And then as the weeks followed, he'd give me a watch and say, go sell it. I need, you know, $6,000 on this watch. And I'd sell it for 62 and I'd keep 200 bucks for myself. And then it was just, you know, rinse and repeat from there. Really? So yep. did, did you at like, what made you even want to do it. Did you see what he was doing first to say, Hey, let me well, ride along with you. Yeah. Well, I didn't know what he was doing. I just saw the lifestyle okay. and I kind of liked that. So it wasn't necessarily, uh, you know, I was, I was willing to do whatever it took to make money. And it just so happened that I saw him as a role model in my life. Okay. And yeah, I just saw what he had and what he did. And, you know, it was just kind of intriguing the way, you know, he'd be at a dinner, but he'd be on the phone like, ah, I'm making money. Like, I don't know, I like that fast money life type of thing. You, you like the way he carried himself and the way, yeah. because I think at an early age, especially like even now you're still young yeah. and I'm still young compared, compared yeah, to yeah. you. We look up to people and admire just like the way, for me personally, I admire how other men 
behave around this man. You know, for whatever reason, he has a, an established rapport in the room, yep. an intimidation maybe to an extent, but just and a, a confidence like no other. Yeah. And I'm assuming that's what he sort of saw in his dad. You're like, I want that. Yeah. And and, and you're a fast And I was dude. always around it too. Right. So even from, like I was saying, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, all the way up till then, I was always around that. So I was always watching that, like that behavior, I guess. How did your dad feel that he wanted to- uh, well, my dad was, wait, what do you mean? Like, how did your dad feel that when you wanted to start working with? with my dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, my, my parents wanted me to go to college. I was going to have to pay for it myself anyway. So it's yeah. not like they lost out on any money. Okay. But uh, my dad was a retired cop and uh, my mom was just, you know, a stay at home mom. And, uh, you know, well, they were both stay at home because my dad was retired. Right. But yeah, I mean, he wanted me to go to college and, and get a job. And, you know, they wanted me to like, you know, the, the American dream, which of the typical American dream is to like get a job and get a good yeah, yeah. high paying job and go to college and do all that. Yeah. So that's what they wanted me to do. Are they foreigners or they're born here? No, they're, they're born here. Okay. Yeah. Staten Island. Cool. Oh, no shit. Yeah. There you go. That's how does it feel about it now? Uh, feel about what? What you're doing. Oh yeah. I mean, he's happy. I mean, yeah. when we go out somewhere and people are stopping me and shit. Like, is it like, funny? He's proud. Yeah. He's probably like, what the fuck are they stopping my, my son? <laughs> yeah. From? Yeah. Cause he, he doesn't, he's not on social media. My mom is on social media and she never, uh, she never like followed the tech. She didn't know, she didn't get it. She didn't know how big it was yeah. until recently when, you know, when she, she, she just got TikTok and now she's watching all my videos and, and shit and sending me shit. And she's like, Oh, like nice. Like yeah, nice yeah, one liner. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, nice. yeah, that's funny. Um, but yes, yeah, I don't think she ever realized how big it was until maybe last year. I think last, uh, Thanksgiving, we went to a dinner and like three of the waiters came up to me and they were just like, Holy shit. Like freaking out. Yeah. And my mom's like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, what the yeah, fuck's yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah, right. Yeah, because she knew I was posting on TikTok and Sun watching, sure. but she didn't know that it was at that level. Now, so, were you were you involved from? So James is the guy behind the camera. Or were you involved from day one? Like, how did yeah. you guys get started and say we want to start filming this stuff? Other than just so, you wanted an audience. Originally, like the TikTok, it was you who was like, "Oh, I'm going to post on TikTok to try and funnel people over to the Instagram, whatever." Right. And the way that you were doing it, you were posting like little POV mm -hmm. video, like. Oh, POV, I've your sister yeah, yeah. just bought a watch for her step niece's grandfather. I was just whatever, posting some just, outlandish shit. Yeah, just outrageous shit. Just views, to get right, views. Right. And that was doing okay for you. It was getting thousands of views here and there, whatever yeah, else. Yeah. But it wasn't like like popping off in the way that we yep. kind of wanted it to. One day we were making our regular runs. This was back when? March of 2022? Yeah, I mean, January? We, we were just was. doing our, our regular day, yeah. just selling a watch. You're negotiating with Mike Anter. And no, no, I was negotiating with uh, the other guy, Mike, prestigious cousin. Oh, okay. Yep. I knew it was a Mike. Remember that? Did, yes, Mike Prisons cousin. Like, yeah. I was like, yo, yeah, yeah. we should film this. We should film this. <laughs> you were literally going back and forth on a watch, and of course it's like, oh, yeah, we, we were doing it this. anyway. Yeah. We were already in the middle of talking sure. about a watch. Yeah. And then yeah, go ahead. Buck, start filming. I'm like, okay, sure. I take the phone <laughs> out, I start filming it, just whatever's going on. Back and forth. And we had that footage. You posted it on TikTok that night or the next night, and it did pretty well at first. Yeah, it did like a million overnight. Then they took it down. And then they took it down. So I reposted it. And then that one did like two or three million no way. overnight. Yeah. And I was wow. like, I was like, hmm. But basically maybe people like yeah. this style of content. <laughs> and then so you you had one video ran with it. Yeah. And yeah. I just kept every time I would negotiate with somebody on a watch, just, which is every day. Just take the phone out, and start just filming. Just take the phone out, and start filming. <laughs> and I guess it was just a mix of the personality, the camera work, and and just the that that fast paced right. like holy shit, these guys are making money and with watches, like who yeah. would have thought? Because a lot of people, like obviously to us, it's obvious that watches are, could be a business. Sure. Just like bicycles, reselling bicycles or anything. But a lot of people, they just didn't realize that this was a thing. So it's intriguing. They're like, holy shit. Yeah. Right. It's fun to watch. And then you're like, wow, these guys can make actual money doing it. Has filming impacted positively or negatively your actual transaction? Like are, are some people like, get the camera out of my face, don't film this at type of first, thing? At first, it was yeah. not as well received because yeah. they didn't understand it. They were like, what the fuck are these two kids doing with the camera right. in my face? And in this business, it's like, it's very unorthodox to be filming this type it's of very stuff. Right. Nobody, nobody wants to yeah. be on camera. Right. Very so, private. Uh, a lot of the people were just saying, I'd rather not be on camera and we'd say, okay, and then you know, sell something or buy something from them anyway. But then as they started seeing that their peers where, you know, people were coming up to, you know, someone we posted in a video a month ago and like, holy shit, you're the guy on the Vukum video. Right, right, they right. would see that and be like, oh, well, maybe it's not so bad. It would help my business. Right. 
So then that's when it kind of just like uh, spread like a virus. Do you ever notice that these people are almost like giving you deals for the camera? Because I've seen you almost and say you it. You know something? Like oh, I'm about to go on a fucking rant, dude. Go ahead. Sorry. I didn't mean to curse. <laughs> go ahead. Man. Dude. Fucking after your tenth, it, it really yeah, it, it really really really. Can we swear on this podcast? Off. You do what you want. Okay, right. okay. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Now after we've said, sorry, it, like, <laughs> I figured only ten like My twelve bad. minutes. Yeah, 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 so you're good. good. Yeah, it really pisses me off. A lot, like truly, genuinely, because there are some guys who, and I don't, I never want to sound like that guy, mm. but I'll sound like that guy. Go ahead. Like I've completely put their business on the map, mm. and to this day, we'll go there. And we'll try to sell them a watch or we'll try to buy something. And they will haggle with me still to the last $50. And it, it is so aggravating because I, you know, I genuinely put you on. I see people coming up to you saying, I, I just touched the mic. I see people coming up to you saying, oh, I'm here because of the Vukum video that he posted last week. Like, I want to buy something from you specifically. Like, and you know, I don't know. I get texts all day. Hey, I just went to this guy. I just went to this guy because of your video. Like, I just bought this. Look. And, you know, I'm not going to be like, you know, throw me $500, throw me 250 yeah, I'm yeah. happy to help. Yeah. But when I go to you and I try to do business with you, like we always have in the past, and you're going to haggle me over $50 or $100, uh, you know, then then <laughs> that... Infuriates you. It upsets you a little bit. It really does. You can see it in my does. eyes. I, I, my I'm, pupils I'm look, probably dilate. I'm, look, I'm looking that. at it right now. Man. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, and, and I totally get that too. Do you have the opposite? Like, or is anybody like a go to person for you because of how they treat you? And they're like, listen, you're bringing me so mm -hmm. much business. Plenty of people. Bucks doesn't matter. Too, right? too many people to, to even name. I would say it's more positive Good. than negative. Good. I would say. And you don't, yes. don't got to out to anybody unless you no, want to. Yeah, if you want to say some names of, of businesses that you think are. Yeah, shout out to Mike Answer. Mike Answer's a day one. Mike Answer is this guy on 47th Street who. I've been dealing with since I was 19 and he, sh he showed me the same amount of respect from when I first went up to him and shook his hand to, to now it's, mm -hmm. it, he, he didn't switch up at all. And That's he was awesome. always nice to me and respectful. I would have to assume the age comes into play. Like who wants to go, if you're a yeah, 35 year old wants to man, buy something from a kid, has that I offended you? It. Has it offended me? Affected you? Like affected me? Um, no. Nobody really shoes you away. Cause you're like, get out of here, kid. Oh, back in the day. At yeah. For, at first, even for me, when at I was first, trading, yeah. Same, yeah, people were not. They didn't really respect young, young people, like right. 19, 20 years old. Like yeah. they just didn't get it. Yeah. Cause that business typically is like older. Old. Is it normal? I was going to ask like, what's the, the average age of these guys? 48. Yeah. Oh, 40, really? They're, they're older. Why did I just say 48? No, I was no, like, 40. So, I mean, that's accurate. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a very like generational <laughs> business. Like you have people that have right. been in this business for 40 yeah, years. Most of them like, are just, you know, my great grandfather to grandfather to dad to me. That's yeah. typically, it's just, it's just a blood the whole bloodline of family. I can't imagine like how much how much street cred you build and how much reputation from being a family generational thing. Like you, you probably like establish, I'm sure there's like territories a little bit in that space, right? Yeah. Is there like a, you don't go here because somebody else is selling, yeah. is selling over there or is it? Yeah. Oh yeah. As, no, a retail, I, as a retailer. I think I might, as just, the retailer. Oh, you don't yeah. on somebody's toes. Yeah, you don't step on someone's toes. Yeah. yeah. If someone in the business is like respected and stuff like that, you know better than to like, oh, try and get in the middle of their deal or try and yeah. like get yeah. in the middle. Yeah, like you know, let's say like Moses is going well, around. And that was actually one of the first lessons that his dad told oh, yeah. me on that first day. He's like, you know, if, if, I'm looking at a watch or if I'm looking at anything or if I'm speaking to somebody, yeah. shut your fucking mouth, sit there and watch. Yeah. So don't say, oh, that's a nice watch. Don't oh don't fucking God. don't fucking yeah, say yeah. a fucking word. Bro. That's it. And that was that's a good lesson for the, Yeah, that actually yeah. There, I have this that, lesson. Yeah. Yo, and yeah, and people are doing that shit Fuck. all the time. They're like, you know, I'll be I'll be dealing with somebody and some fucking rando will come over and say, Holy shit, that I love that fifty five hundred dollar watch. And yeah. I'm like Shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm trying to deal <laughs> yeah. with this guy. So, yeah, that shit's annoying. One re one particular time that I remember, I was there maybe, it had to have been three, four years ago. Literally, same spot, 66 oh, West, whatever. My dad was conducting business with a, a pretty serious, you know, dealer friend of his, you know, yeah. really getting into it. They have this rhythm when they start dealing with each other. It's very, like, flowy, and you don't, you shut up and watch. You don't get in the way. Right. There's this one guy in the street who's like a vintage know it all expert. He's a nobody, but. Literally came up to the booth. My dad was conducting business with his with his buddy, and the guy was like, "Oh, I really like this watch more than that watch." <laughs> just fucked the whole deal. And my dad's buyer didn't buy anything at that point because he was just like, like he was just thrown off. It's like you don't get in the middle of like right. two men conducting business. So, and it sounds stupid. It sounds like no, oh, like oh, just one guy saying he likes one watch. It could throw the no, deal completely. It throws off a whole 
a whole orchestrated vibe that you guys oh, have yeah. together. You're convincing him of something, and if somebody gets in the way of that, it's almost like when you play Monopoly, and like your friends like, Psh, that's a bad deal, and you're like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. I'm dealing with this guy over yeah. here. Don't be <laughs> chit chat. And long term, it doesn't. Yeah, long term, it doesn't affect the relationship. Life goes on. They've right. done plenty more business, but that particular deal, guy got in the middle of it. It's like, yo, like show some respect. Like shut right. the fuck up and stand aside. Like wait until we're done. You know, you know what, what I, mean? I, I like, and I'm asked, I, I guess I can ask you the question in the beginning. It seems like because I've seen a couple of videos where you've had to go to like four different retailers, right? Because he said no, 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 mm -hmm. yes. Yep. Everybody seems like they're in the right ballpark. Like it, it, nobody's yeah. like that's a that's a ridiculous ask. Nowhere near close. And then you go to somebody else, and they're like closer. So is there like a I guess like an unwritten rule to stay relatively ethical in this space? Uh, yes and no. I mean, m most of the guys that you'll see on my videos are the, the ethical kind. So they point. will stick to, you know, some sort of, I guess you could call it a code. Not really, but a yeah. code. And then there's the guys that just don't give a fuck. And you'll have a $8,000 watch and they'll offer you four. And you'll just Wait, be like, you're you're oh, that was, yeah. I remember yeah. that exact have example. Have you seen a video on, um, on TikTok where it's, it's the Asian dude, and he's like, POV, you're reselling shoes. And it's like, I and, love, the, and he's like, bro, oh, he yeah. I know. I just so watched his video yesterday. Fun. He's like, oh, I got these like old Nikes, and like he's full yeah. at the And then he they goes away with my dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that guy. That dude, what, is it, what is it, reselling shoes? I So that's what I envision as like, if you're a newer. First, yeah, I this dude is hilarious. So that's what I envision as like, you're a younger guy at 19 years old. We're like, oh, I have this dainty old watch and I want a couple hundred bucks out of it and the guy's like this is worth 10 grand does anybody ever fuck you over like that no, no because I had his dad right you never went out alone okay no, not even alone I just anything I had because uh, every small detail about a watch could affect the price drastically so I knew that so anytime I got a watch I would show it to him first to make sure Still that it wasn't no? something special yeah really oh, yeah. You, oh you won't resell a watch without showing Mr. Well, and, like, no, now, within, within your wheelhouse, within, of course. Yeah. Within, my, like, within my knowledge, my realm of knowledge, I will. But, you know, if it's something where I know, okay, there's many different variations of this particular watch, I will send him a picture just so he could be like, it's nothing. This yeah, way I know yeah. to sell it. Or because he might be like, hold on, bring that to me. Yeah. And I'll bring it to him. He'll be like, holy shit. That was worth so that was worth 10 grand. grand. Have yeah. you ever had something where like you thought it was worth yes. whatever and it was 10x that? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, talk to us about that. Uh, just the other day, like just off the top of my head, yeah. just the other day, there was a bracelet on a watch where the guy had a, a bracelet for a GMT, which is a, a specific type of Rolex yeah. uh, on a date just. And to me, I thought it looked the same. Even now, I thought it was, oh, really? it was the same thing. Yeah. But then I just so happened to show it to his dad. It wasn't like I did it on purpose. I He was just around and I'm like, oh, I just picked this up. He looked at it. He's like, looks at the back, looks at the bracelet. He's like, with his glasses. Like, <laughs> it's like, Mick, you know what this is? I'm like, no. Fucking He's like, bro, <laughs> give me my pusher. So pusher's a tool to take the bracelet off. He's like, get a fucking pop the bracelet off. He's like, Mick, this is a bracelet for a two-tone GMT. This is a $3,000 bracelet on this shitty watch. You thought this was a $300 bracelet. No. And I'm like, oh shit. Wow. Yeah. So I'm like, he's like, keep the bracelet, buy the right bracelet, put the right bracelet on, makes the watch original, boom, sell the watch, make your money on the watch, and now you have this $3,000 bracelet. Thank you. And yeah. And but that's just away, like, one wow. example. There's, there's so many that times like that happens. Five awesome. times a week. That yeah, it happens, happens all the time. Yeah. But Love that. Yeah. So. Okay. So let's, let's get into the nitty gritty of watch selling. Give me... The top three to five most common brands that you're selling and reselling. Most common brands or most common models? Of well, I want to get into the models for a oh, second. So most common brands, brands for me specifically, yeah. uh, Rolex, uh, Omega, and AP. Okay. Yeah, and I usually stay away. I usually just stick to Rolex. Okay. But then if I go to the next ones, it'll be Omega and AP. So Rolex, I'm assuming you know the most about. Yeah. Because it's more common. People are looking for yep. more Rolexes over ABs are too expensive for the average folk. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. So talk to me about Rolex specifically. What are people looking for out of the Rolex? Is it the, cause I hear these phrases and I'm not that into watches, but I hear mm -hmm. about the face and the bracelet. Box that's all I know. Box paper. That, that's all I know. So yeah. give me, give me everything you're looking for. Uh, I'd say like looking for as far as when I, my buying process, when Correct. I get a watch in. Yep, yep. Uh, okay, so let's just say I get a watch in from a retail guy, which just means, you know, my grandpa left me this watch, I wanna sell it to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I get the I get the watch shipped. Boom, have the watch in hand. Uh, quickly, I'm looking, just, just off my eyesight, I know if it's real or not now. Uh, then you have to, there's more digging that you have to do. So 
Next thing I do, pop the bracelet off. I look at the serial number, make sure that there's a serial number there and it's not scratched off. If there is a serial number there, I'm looking at the font to make sure it's legitimate. Mm -hmm. uh, then I look at the reference number just to verify that the reference number is still there. Mm -hmm. Then you crack open the, uh, the case back. You look at the movement. Movement's real. Good. Next. Now it's condition. Okay. Can I sell this? What can I sell this for? The condition, blah, blah. Oh, but then also it's parts. I'm looking at the dial, looking at the bracelet, looking at, you know, everything. The bezel. The bezel could be an aftermarket bezel. The crystal could be an aftermarket crystal. Wow. Uh, so I'm looking at all the little parts to make sure the parts are authentic for the watch and period correct, like, you know, time, time period mm -hmm. correct for when the watch was sold, making sure that everything is proper on the watch, making sure the watch is fully legitimate because, you know, a watch could be real, but there's, you know, uh, an aftermarket crystal on it. And an aftermarket crystal doesn't sound like much. It's only 150 bucks to have a real crystal on there, mm -hmm. right? 150? Depending on the watch, yeah. 150 bucks. On, on a Rolex Datejust, it's going to be 150 bucks for a real crystal. But an aftermarket one's like 20, 30. Really? Yes. So what they'll do is they'll finesse it. They'll take the real crystal off, put an aftermarket crystal on, sell the watch off, keep the crystal, collect fucking 100 of them over time, then sell a bunch of the crystals out mm. as a package just to make an extra however much money a month or a year. That's what's so intriguing to me about this whole process. It is so, which I never even thought, it's so much more high volume, low profit versus yeah. High profit, low volume. Like yep. even looking down to these crystals, yep. making eighty bucks a pop. For me, I'm like, yeah. what the fuck do I want to do? I mean, that's bucks? just some finesse or shit. Like if I'm selling a watch to a retail customer, I want to make sure that the whole thing is proper. Because if they bring the watch into a jewelry store and the guy knows something and he's like, oh, you have an aftermarket crystal, but the watch is real, or you have an aftermarket right, right. buckle, uh, the every, everything's real except the buckle, then you just look like a scumbag because you're you're just finessing somebody that doesn't know. You know, they, they don't know any better. They're how, a retail customer. How do you know if it's an aftermarket crystal? What are you looking for? It, well, it's just, it's just by, you know, looking at so many of them, you, you just know could tell something's off. Uh, I, typically the Cyclops, which is that little magnification glass mm -hmm. over the date, uh, it just, that in particular would just look off. Other what, than that, I mean, the way it's raised. Little stuff that you just yeah, know stuff, yeah. that you can't really explain. That, that's yep. interesting. What is the most common way to tell if a Rolex is fake? Besides the TikTok. That's the only thing I know. Honestly, like just, for me, for me, just to look at it, and yeah. I would just know because it's, I don't know, like something's off. Something what's like, what's off. most commonly off when you say that for a fake watch? Like, you know what it is? It's like everything is off. So it's, it, I would say everything about it would be off, mm. but you know, the bracelet might be too skinny for that, for that watch or the, the crystal, the magnification will be off. The dial is just off. The, the, um, the crown is like, like the the logo on the crown is smaller compared to the crown. The itself. font on the dial. The font like, on the dial. Do they just weigh the overall. Do they oh, weight? you know what's, yeah, you know what's I mean, popular? The bezel is like too thick or too yeah. thin. Uh, the bezel is that little round ring that goes on top of the yep, watch. Yep. Uh, that could be too thick or too thin. Um, just the overall just shape. Just overall I think. everything yeah. about it. Yeah, it's the way you it just looks. know because you've seen so many. Yeah, but so, those are just some indicators. Like if if a beginner was to look at it, that's how you could tell if you look at a picture online versus the watch. Those are things that the the beginner would see comparing to the picture and be like, oh, that does look off. They would notice it. Yeah. It was funny. When I um, I was with Dylan Dennis, who lives right over here. We oh, yeah. Dylan Dennis. Yeah. yeah we, yep. went the, we went on the Flagrant podcast. And so- with Which one? Andrew Schultz, Flagrant. Oh, shit. And the city was sick. Yeah, leading up to his fight. And we're literally pulling up. He's like, wait, hold on. Uh, let, let's get out of the car real quick. Buys a $200 Rolex from you know the guy across the street box, papers, everything. He's like, I want to give him a, a fake watch and say it's real. Yeah. We walk on, he's like, here, I bought you a gift. And Andrew's like, you bought me, you bought me a Rolex? Like, there's no fucking way. He opens this thing up and like in seconds, he's like- He knows, yeah. Yeah. He's like, I, I see the soy sauce on this thing. Like this thing is fake as <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess it's just the feel. Like it, yeah. you just know yeah, that. Yeah, you could, oh yeah, that too. You pick it up. It's like, oh. Yeah. It feels different than the other ones. When you right, wind it, right, it doesn't right. wind yeah, it. Right. Oh, when like, you that's wind it. That's a big one. That's that, I, I noticed that too. Everybody yeah. always goes for the wind Sometimes first. when you get down to like, a, like, if it's like a really, really good fake, mm -hmm. uh, when you wind it, it's just, you wind so many of them. And then as soon as you wind a fake one, you're like, oh, that's You know fake. the difference. Yeah. It's either fake or it needs a service bad. Either way, we're popping this thing up and, and checking the movement and seeing. Got it. Got it. Okay. Now, what, what is like a, a, a perfect starter watch? Let's stick with the Rolex. Okay. What's the perfect starter Rolex? Perfect starter Rolex uh, for somebody with a budget of $3,500 or less is going to be a 1601 date just or a 1603 date just. I'll show you a picture. Yeah, please do. Because I hear... what. 
And I want to ask you again, like what are the most, what are the most common Rolexes? I hear Datejust, I hear- Datejust, uh, Presidential, Presidential. Date and then the Daytona. That, those are the most, those are the I would, I would top say, three I would common, say so. Right? I yeah. would say so. So this right here, I show that camera? Show me and then show the camera, yeah. We'll pop it up. Okay, that's the most common. Yep. Gotcha. So this is a, a 1601. And the difference between a 1601 and a 1603, uh, pretty much the same watch, but this right here, is, is a bezel, this round thing going yep, around yep. the watch. Uh, so on the 1603, it's uh, steel. And on a 1601, it's white gold. So okay. same exact watch pretty much. Yeah. But that's the difference. It's probably not wearing a Rolex right now. Yeah, I don't really wear watches. You don't wear watches. That's, yeah. I mean, what? Yeah. You don't wear watches. Nah. You don't like wearing watches. I don't like it on my wrist. Really? I like to like be free and just in like case ready. you fuck somebody up. Not even that. Just like, I don't know. I like yeah, to yeah, be yeah. loose. Wow. Because watches weigh you down. I don't know. That's interesting. That, also, if I wear a watch, it's like I'm a target. Like, you know? Well, if you were to wear a watch, what would it be? If I could only wear one watch, I'd probably pick uh, a Paddock uh, Aquanaut because it's light. It's very light. I actually just put one on the other day just to like, you know, just around yeah. the office just to have one on. What, what sometimes I'll put one on yeah. for 20 minutes just to like, oh, I have a watch on. That just to feel it, it? Yeah. What do those run you? Uh, probably 45, 50. Yeah, those are big boys, huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because um, it's steel, so it's light. And then the strap is a really light rubber. So really? it's a super light watch. Yeah. See, like the AP with a rubber, I feel like I'm like, why am I spending 50 grand for a rubber bracelet? I don't know. Yeah. That's just my I don't, opinion. I guess People like just, them though. Yeah. I mean, I guess in a way it's kind of like art where, you know, why would somebody just spend like a million dollars for a painting? It's like, oh, okay. I get why it's for X, Y, Z reasons. You know, it's right, right, right. can't get it. I don't know. So I, I, I think that's the, the whole hype around watches. I mean- as far as precious metals go, you could get a steel watch. You get a, a Richard Mill for what, like one hundred fifty thousand? A titanium but it's Richard Mill, yeah. No, or a steel, steel one. Richard steel one, Mill. one yeah. isn't it steel? I thought it was titanium. I don't know anything the about cheap, them. The cheap Richard Mill is like titanium. I it's the still like ninety grand. One was I thought. Steel. I thought, it? I thought it was titanium. Is it? The one that remember the one that Tony had like last year or two years ago? That wasn't steel. Oh, that's why it was so light. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a really really expensive steel watch that it's like it's steel. It it's not really. No precious metals. It's not worth really anything as yeah. a raw metal. That's a lot yeah, of watches. Not, yeah, I, don't think I know, but I'm saying, like, I know, but yeah. you know, that's nuts. The fact that a steel watch could cost sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars. Like an AP Jumbo, yeah. that's steel. Yeah, it's insane. And it's like what sixty thousand, fifty thousand right now. Yeah. Now, do you, do you think these prices are so dramatic because of the resale value? Like, there, there's an invest. Do you see watches as an investment for most people? Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't say, cause if somebody was like, Hey, uh, is this watch going to go up? I'd be like, I, I, I'm not a stock market analyst. I don't know. Right. But, uh, I, I do say usually the same thing, depending on what the watch is. I'll say like this particular model, uh, over a five year period, the past five years has gone up. So like, I kind of just say that cause I don't want to say, Oh, you got to buy this watch. It's going to go up in price. Cause then when it goes down in price, then I look like the asshole. Do you see, yeah, right. Do you see some brands as more of an investment versus others? Or Rolex is kind of just the, why is Rolex the gold standard? I I, I don't know. Maybe Do you everybody, know? everybody knows it. I think it's just it's quite just literally just the gold standard. It's just the staple. It's just prestigious, iconic, just classic watch brand. Yeah. I yeah. Know, I think, that's, really I think it. that's it too. Like I would assume I got 10 grand to spend, right? Whatever it may be. I want to buy a watch. If I'm going to buy a watch, I want you to know what it is, right? Let's just be transparent. Yeah. That's I think that's buying things. Yeah. I don't want to buy, if I had the money, something that I'm flexing and people are like, oh, cool, $100 watch. Yeah. Like, motherfucker, no, I spend, it's a Rolex. You see yeah. that? So I'm assuming that's probably why. It's like, yeah. You know, people just know yeah, it people, is. If you wear a Rolex, like, it's like, oh, you have a Rolex yeah, on. Yeah, you could spot a Rolex from across the room. You can wear room. any like, Rolex, okay, that's a Rolex from any era, any model, and it's like, oh, you're wearing a Rolex. What's like, the, I mean, 3500 bucks is not relatively expensive. Like, you could yeah, buy- Yeah, I mean, I would say, as far as, like, nice Rolex, because you could get, you could get uh, a 34 millimeter uh Oyster date, I think that's what they call it. Oyster date. I just know the reference numbers at this point. It's a sixty six ninety four is the reference number. But you could get one for eighteen hundred to two thousand dollars. It's a thirty four millimeter. It's really tiny. It's really frail looking. The bracelet's light. The whole watch is light. It looks like a cheap watch. Yeah. So I mean, 
I'd say that that oh, that specific one I showed, that's like the, the a good star to watch. I would never recommend a 34 millimeter for a man. Like it's just really small and frail. At that point, like yeah, you're 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 flexing your Rolex, but for the people that know, the I'm people like, that know, that, just be like, bro, you're that. wearing you're wearing a 1601, you're you're wearing a three thousand dollar watch. Right. Yeah. yeah. If I'm gonna step into that level of like, let me spend a lot of money on yeah. a watch, I'm not gonna go spend two. I'd rather save the money and yeah. spend five. You ever grand. seen a, a Rolex, a Batman? Or a no. Pepsi, like I've those. heard of Pepsi. What, what is that? Yeah, so I'll show you. I'll show you a picture. These are watches where I mean, I guess if you're a finance bro, where you're you're wearing a watch with with a sole purpose of trying to like impress maybe coworkers, or you're going out on the town and you want to wear a watch and have people be like, oh, that's a nice watch. Yeah, if yeah. you're wearing it solely to impress other people, I'd say when you start getting into like the fifteen to twenty thousand dollar range, that's when you're like, oh, okay, like I can respect that. Right. So I was gonna ask that. What, yeah. what is like the? I, what, I got what you were saying. Yeah. I'm like, I think I know what he's talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. here. So this is a Rolex Pepsi. So if you want to make an impression, this is the Rolex. You're getting I mean, this, is a good, this is a good start. start. Yeah. Right, okay. Like I would, that. I would say. That's yeah. That's nice. I would say it's a day date. That's what I would say. If you're a trying to make, if you're trying to make an impression, well, I mean, that's what uh, I would you say. know, if you're trying a, vin to a vintage, date. oh, yeah, like a nineties day date for like fifteen grand, sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, that's, that's good because you're wearing I think, gold. Watch. I think a Rolex day date, yellow gold day date, is the like staple watch that if you want to make an impression with somebody, you'll walk in the room with that watch and it's like, oh, see, instant respect. I think you could look at it from the other way because then somebody who knows a watch will be like, oh, that's just an old day date. Who gives a shit? Where's your day date? Like, I don't know. That's what I'm, I'm, well, I'm saying, but I'm saying if they know why, they have them. They <laughs> but you know, know what? You know what? Then it is. I think it's just like you should just respect it. Yeah, just respect. I, it. I think I think you should wear what you like and not try to impress anyone. I yeah. like that. No, because yeah. I've I've heard again when I didn't know and I still don't know about watches. I heard like the two tone bracelets are kind of like why even buy you you got to buy silver or gold. Is that a thing too? I think it's just preference. I mean, me personally, I don't like wearing two tone. Uh, I like either gold or or steel, and even gold. I don't like gold stuff. I like. No. I'd rather have a steel watch than a gold watch. Just what's your it's favorite? Lighter. Yeah. What's your favorite Rolex? Favorite Rolex. Budget unlimited. Budget unlimited. Yeah. It's not. It's not going to be anything crazy. Probably, if I had to wear one, it would just be a Batman. I think. What does that look like? Is that a black face? Or a Pepsi? Yeah. It's this. It's actually the same watch as this. It just has a different uh, bezel configuration. Bezel's the outside, and then yep. the face is the inside, right? Yeah. Actually, okay. sorry, a Batgirl. Batgirl's on a Jubilee bracelet, which is, the bracelet is that. What is this? That's a Batgirl. Batgirl. That's what they call it. Why? Because the Batman is on, an, is on a different bracelet. It's not like this is for a girl and the other one's for a guy. Let me, see the, the Let me see the Batman. So, that, so you just, all you have to do is remember this bracelet, okay? Okay. Because you're going to be like, oh, I see the difference. Okay. I'm, I'm closing my eyes. <laughs> Don't show me anything else. <laughs> All right, this is a Batman. Okay, I still. That's a different color bracelet. Uh, not different color, so they're both steel bracelets. But if you look at this bracelet, yeah. and then you look at that bracelet, you see the difference. Wait, go back. Do it again. Batman. Yeah, yeah. They Bat have more ridges in this one. Yeah, there's like little. Yeah, what is that? Basically, divots. That's a jubilee bracelet. Jubilee bracelet. Yeah. And what's the other one? The other one's an oyster bracelet. Oyster bracelet. Yeah. Okay. I Try like that one better, better than Batman. You like more, the oyster more, bracelet better? More, yeah, more expensive? Uh, actually, no. The, the Jubilee bracelet's I'm, I'm sort of pissed you, you didn't try to sell me a watch today. I was hoping you'd bring <laughs> Try to sell your watch? And you'd be like, hey, listen, John. No, no, I, I wouldn't know you, to you, sell you. You'd look great in this. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I'm a sucker for that shit, man. You could have sold, sold me anything today. Um, what has been, uh, do you have like a, a gigantic win as a, as a sale? Like anything crazy? I mean, we posted a video of a pretty big win not too that long was ago, big. that was a big one. That was really big. It was a um, a 6263 Daytona, which is like a vintage Daytona. Mm. And the guy who showed it to Tyler didn't exactly know what he had. He thought the dial on it was refinished. And um, it wasn't because he, th he thought- So it then had this be, is where yeah. his dad comes so in. So my dad jumps yeah. in, you know, he brings to my dad, my dad jumps in. He's like, this dial is 100% right. This watch is 100% right. How much does this guy want? How much do you want? 30? Eight thousand, forty thousand. I think he said, I think I think he said forty for grand. He wanted bought it for thirty eight five. Yeah, yeah. Because if you go, he wanted forty thousand, but if you go there right away and you're like, okay, then he's like, oh, he's that's like, why, a red why flag. so fast? Like, why are you so fast? Why are you buying it so quickly without? So you go back, you haggle with him. You kind of just like just play it off. Play yeah, yeah. And there's a reason why. Like it kind of went down that way, which we explained. The guy, there was a story with my dad and him. Yeah, from his ten years ago. Like the whole him, thing. Yeah. My dad was like, oh, this motherfucker. Like, Fuck him, right? Things gonna get over on me. No, he's not. So there's a story to it. But yeah, that was a big win. How much was it? Like forty grand, I think. That we sold to Seth for eighty. Yeah. For what? Eighty thousand. 
you made a video about this? Is yes, it? I watched this you video. Like, see it? Yeah, it's on, yeah, it's on TikTok. So does that get in the way? Does video get in the way of like you really scoring big because these guys and then see this video and be like, yo, fuck you, 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 you screwed me over last time? I don't really think we care. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> don't, he should, he don't, should, don't he should have done what he done. Yeah, like, he, he did some fucked up shit 10 years ago and that's what happens when you try to- uh, Okay. He see. basically sold my dad out for $1,000. My dad offered yeah, like him- He like yeah. over, he stepped on his toes. Yeah. My dad- For $1,000. My dad offered him X amount of money for a particular watch. The guy said, oh, maybe I'll let you know. A week later, the same watch goes back to my dad from another guy asking for $1,000 more. So the guy sold it to sold another dealer else. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. Oh, that's 1000 or whatever it was. And my dad was like, this fucking guy. Yeah. It's just so, games like that. I'm assuming you just don't do Here. It. Yeah. So yeah, making 41500 I'm walking. That's your dealer friend of mine. He doesn't want to be on camera. Scumbag. Uh, his hands can be on camera. He said that. I saw do you actually. want to run the whole video? I do, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So now this is the guy you're, you're pulling one out. Yeah. He has no clue. No clue. See, the thing is, he knows enough where he like knows the reference number, he knows shit, but he doesn't know enough about anything else. How though? That's what I don't get. Like, how it's, do you not know These this? types of pieces are like very, very, very specific and not everyone's going to know every detail about these pieces. Like he can know it's a 6263. He doesn't know the inner workings and the ins and outs of it. Okay. How are you feeling right now? Because you know this thing's worth 80 grand. You know what it is? I, even me, I personally don't know enough, but I knew in the back of my head, like, this could be a fucking hit right now. Could be a score. Oh, you still but don't know what it's worth. You'll see, well, in the video, you'll see, I look at him and I'm like, because you know, because you know I know, yeah. I know, but I don't, full, I don't know enough to be like, like, why is he asking this is, so little? Yeah. That's why I had to go to his dad because I'm not a thousand percent positive. I'm just like, I, I think this is what it is. Like, Buck, what do you think? Yeah. Like, I'm like, I think it is what it is. And too. then he's like, Oh, fuck. I'm like, That's let's make so sure. Funny. Right here, you'll see I start to notice it. <laughs> Pause that. Who the fuck says 40, but I'm negotiable? I'm not giving yeah. 40 now. Like, how do you even. It's, this stuff is weird, though. This yeah. stuff is like. That's just reality. You kind of expect, like, someone's going to offer you 30. Like, that's now, the thing. Now, when you say, are the things like. 40 non-negotiable and it really means non-negotiable. Like, are they really transparent when they no, say No, they're not things? non- If they say non-negotiable, they're never non-negotiable. So it's all fucking yeah, facade anyway. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can offer whatever you sometimes want. Sometimes I don't even negotiate with people, but those videos don't make it up because it's just not interesting. Nobody wants to watch oh, that. Oh, sometimes they'll give you prices to take it? Yeah, it's like, okay. Yeah. Move on. You made a couple hundred bucks that day. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. 5% sure this. The reason why I say it's a refinished style because where it says they tolerate here, it's supposed to be in red. Put it to the mic so people can hear. Scratching my ear all nervous. And that's exactly where he messed up. He didn't know that it, the Paul Newman, like that was the giveaway. Dude, guy thinks it's a refinished dial. I'm pretty sure it's not. If it's not a refinished dial, this is a fucking score and a half. He said 40, right? Yeah. And he said he's negotiable? He said he's negotiable. I'm not even negotiating with him if it's right. Maybe try so he doesn't think so he doesn't catch on. I love your facial expressions, bro. They're so Thank funny. You. It's a dealer, dude. He just doesn't know. What? I'm giving it this. I'm giving it to Buckley. If Buckley likes it, wants to sell it. So now you give it to Buckley, he... For the people that, aren't, that can't watch this. Give it to Buckley. He sees it and says, "Holy shit!" Basically, how quick does it take Buckley to realize? Yeah, wait, five even, seconds. Even when I when I go up to him, he's like, "What the fuck do you want?" I'm like, "He doesn't get it. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't yeah. get the situation." Oh, so he knew instantly. Yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. Right, so I don't want anybody that people that are watching. So he he knows 
80 grand to go back to him to negotiate. He, that's a big win. Now, yeah. the video has how many views? Probably close to two now, right? Two million? So yeah, the video made you, the, the video made you a couple grand on, on TikTok. No, wait, hold on a second. I have a question about this shit. Dude. Yeah, yeah. So you said that made you a couple grand on TikTok. Yeah. Bro, my videos, my RPM is like 23 cents. What? See? Yeah. Mine's a dollar. What the sense. fuck? It matters. It, so you're in the you're in the program, right? Uh, creativity program. Yeah. So beta, anything over a minute. Um, what I think it matters is like who your audience is. So let's assume I'm assuming your audience is young mm-hmm. because that's like the, just the style of content you're. you're yeah. And so they're probably not as valuable. Like me, I make liquor content. Liquor is a booming, very yeah. expensive business. So the assumption I'm just making this right. Like the people that are watching my stuff are more valuable to the platform overall versus yours for whatever reason. Yeah, because they're older, wiser maybe? I, I don't know. I know people that have like a, a, a dollar and a half, which wow. is insane. That's insane. My buddy, uh, you know, you ever see uh, Vinny G- Giganti? Yeah. Fucking hilarious. He lives right in Hoboken. He showed me his, and I won't say the numbers, because he gets like millions and millions of views. He has like yeah. a video with like 50 million views on it. Wow. And he's like, check this out, cuz look how much money I'm making. I'm like, you little motherfucker, man. <laughs> Wait, yeah, also it's great it's weird, though, I love seeing it. On there, it says estimated uh, payout or estimated yeah. balance. But then when you click the real balance, it's like nowhere near It's that. just, it goes in increments of like how you're paying it out. So they won't give you an all one lump sum. But Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so, okay, so you're... Are you see when you say like you have a day to day job? What is your what does your day to day look like? Job function is get into the city, uh, check in with everybody, get some watches out of a safe, and then get to work. Try to sell them or buy stuff. Yeah, that's a fun day for you. Oh, it's fun. I love it. Yeah, and you rather go and buy stuff. It's like mutual. Yeah, like a, a mix. So that was your biggest win. Have you ever had like a, a a loss where you bought something that just was not worth what you thought it was? The AP the other day, the blue AP. That's a, yeah, that was, eh, it's not going to be that bad. It's not going to be that bad. Like five, 6,000 probably. Yeah. Maybe a little more. Yeah. yeah it happens. Like yeah. every, maybe once every other month. How do, and you don't have to share this if you don't want to, how do profits work with you guys? Like if you make, let's say 40 grand off of, of a watch sale, you're not keeping all that to yourself. Well, no, nah, it just depends. Like if for that specific deal, I brought his dad in. So he got half, I got half. Flat. And that's it. Yeah. Keep it moving. That's and awesome. then, um. I mean, anything, yeah, anything like like regular, any regular day where I'm just yeah. buying and selling watches. Yeah, just if it's Vukum LLC you. and Tuscany Rose LLC buying and selling watches yeah. for their respective companies, it's theirs. It's theirs. Okay, yeah. So how does that work? Your Vukum <laughs> versus like the, what was the other company called? Tuscany Rose. Yeah. So what's yeah. the difference? So Tuscany Rose is his dad, right. his watch trading company. Mm-hmm. Vukum LLC is me. It's my watch trading company. But only. is that your dad's not involved with Vukum? LLC. His dad's not involved with Vukum LLC. His dad is involved with like the media end and he's involved with the media end. So that's Vukum Media LLC. Right. You're just then, Vukum LLC. Yeah. Vukum LLC is just watch trading only. Like mm-hmm. that bank account, that LLC is just buy a watch. Money goes out for a watch. Money comes in for a watch. That's it. No, nothing else. Sponsors, TikTok, this, that, the third. That's nothing. all separate. That's, that's, that's all media. Yeah, so that's Vukum that's, Media yeah. or Tuscany Rose yeah. Media. Do you, do you take brand sponsorships? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. How do you even work that into a work, uh, a video? Just, you're there in a spot wearing something. I like a, like a t-shirt or whatever. Okay. That's awesome. It's probably like extra found money. You don't got to charge. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was actually going to ask you too, like, cause I know you do a lot of sponsorships. I would love to start getting more sponsorships than we get now. Uh, do you, what do you do? Do you just leave an email in your bio and say for sponsorship inquiries, email me? Like, how do you do it? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it matters. Depends on who you are. Because again, I, I was talking to this guy, another younger creator and hundred, hundreds of millions of views in the month, right? But comedy wow. sketch stuff, right? Like, so he came to me, he's like, look, man, I, I, don't, I don't know why I'm struggling to, I can't make any money. And the reality is that type of content is difficult to make a lot of money on because think of your brand ops. There's not a lot there. A t-shirt maybe, maybe a can in the background, maybe mm-hmm. a quick ad plug. Yep. For us- we're using five products guaranteed every video, a shaker, a liquor, a chaser, yeah. mm-hmm. something in the background, a t-shirt. So we have every capacity to make a pretty decent amount of cash per video. So our views could be a little bit lower and you're still making some good cash. So for you, I think it's about like, we were, I was very active in the beginning of outreach. Like I would go and DM brands and the leverage is never, same thing with you. Leverage is never where you want it to be, yeah. but it's better than zero. So I had to yeah. go to the brand and say, hey, look, love your, love your product. We'd love to use it in a video. What do you want to pay for it? And they'll say, 
bottom barrel number and the beginning and, of the ticket. And the rate of them answering is probably like three out of a hundred, right? Well, if that, yeah. If that. Maybe you get one. And nowadays a little bit different because what tends to happen is like the snowball effect where you're a brand yeah. and you're in the liquor space. You see us running an ad for a competitor. Yeah. Now you know we're open for business. So you reach out to us. Okay. So I just signed with an agency, but I was doing it all on our own. And I think, again, it, it matters how you approach it. Your TikTok is way less about making it a business and more about funneling for your other business. Yeah. You know, our business is one of the same. So a little bit different. Yeah. But I'm happy to help you. Yeah. If, you yeah, if we could talk, talk yeah, off yeah, camera absolutely. about like your agent and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, segue into that. Who has been the most famous person you've sold a watch to? Famous person. Anybody like crazy? Not, not, not really. Even if we, that's yeah. interesting. That we can't even say, honestly, because normally when you typically deal with like more like, a list. I think like his dad does more of it's like definitely more private. Those types, of and you people. can't even say their names, right? Prefer not to. They, they don't. Yeah. Just prefer not. That's to. interesting. So I would assume that, like, because of your online presence, so I was like an NFL player, or even me. If I wanted to buy a watch right now, I'd go to you. I, who else am I going to go to? Sick. Thank sure. you. What the fuck? Like, why would I go? To, why would I go to anybody else? But number one, I know you now, and I know you're not going to fuck me over. And yeah. it's like a cool. This is what he does. Yeah, we can make a cool video out of it. Like, yeah, that sounds. That, interesting. I, like, I actually I like when uh, creators like hit me up. I'm going to go that. to you. I'm gonna, we're going to make a video. I'm going to say, look, I got this much money to spend. Go find me the best watch you can find. Yeah, we'll make a video. That'd be a, a sick video. Yeah, 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 yeah. It would just be video. me and you walking around 47th Street, four minute video. <laughs> and I won't say shit the whole time. Yeah, I'll like just be like, said. this is this, this is that. You'll be like, this looks cool. No, nah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe next like, one. He's not that happy. No, yeah. no, no. Give, him, give him some lower. That'd be a sick video. It's, I actually wanted fun. to do that, that with somebody. Good. So if I'm you want to do that like this week or next, I'm in. or whenever you have time. Yeah, I got to give you credit, man. Your composure at such a young age when negotiating is so good. Like you don't crack under pressure. You're very stick to your guns. I think it comes from, you know, you're not fucking anybody over. When you say a price, you yeah. know, it's in range. So when somebody, you say 5,000, they say four, yeah. you're not budging because you know, yeah. five is a round. I think, I think it stems charging. from like, besides working with his dad and everything, I used to work in a, a flea market okay. selling phones, like iPhones, Samsung phones, and uh, like parts and uh, cases, mm. like all that chargers, whatever. And I was dealing with, I was at that time probably 13 to 15 is when I started selling the phones. And I was dealing with people that were, you know, like 40, 50, 60 that were just like, you know, crackheads and like fucking just, you know, ex cons and just like yeah. regular people that you'll meet in life. Mm -hmm. So I feel like for me, as if a regular kid that didn't go to college, if a regular 18 or 19 year old kid went on the street, uh, on 47th street and tried selling watches. He might be like a little intimidated by it, but me, I was kind of just, I was already used to dealing with people. So I, I feel like, I don't know. I just, the two worlds collided anyway. Right. So you're used to, you're used to the game and you're also used to like yeah. the area. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever see yourself venturing out? Like is America and New York specifically the best place for watch selling? I would say so. Really? Like no, like, I'd say, crazy, I'd, like, say you, I'd say New York and I'd say 47th really? street, just specifically 47th street is, you know, the best. I mean, there's other places too. There's other markets, but I think New York is the best. I think if you ask anybody in the business, they would say the same as well. Interesting. So that's, I mean, it's great that you're in the area. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Now talk to me about Moses. Cause it's the only other watch guy I know. It's my fucking boy. Is bro. It? I like Moses. Well, well, yeah. I've seen one video and he was talking about, um, manifestation and your mindset and, and aside mm -hmm. from watches. So that was the first video that I saw him and I was like, this dude's dope, but I yeah. only saw him cause of you. Well, so Moses, uh, um, what was I going to say? He is the same, like the same way you see him on camera, how he's like super nice to everybody. He's a humble, friendly guy is the same way he is in person. Like cool. you won't get that with a lot of people like me. I'm like, I was telling you before we even started, like on camera, I'm probably like super arrogant and they take <laughs> it like I'm arrogant, but in person, I'm not really like that. It's just cause in that environment, when you're like, your blood's flowing fast. You're fucking jittery on yeah. coffee and shit. It's, I guess that's just how it comes off. And it's New York. Everybody's just like that. Moving, yeah. But yeah, like in person, I'm just kind of laid back. Moses, same way he is on camera. Just that nice, cool guy. He's the same, same in person. Yeah. Right. He's a lot of the people on the street, sorry to cut you off. Yeah. A lot of people on that street on camera, they're very, you know, humble, nice, whatever you want to call it. But in person, their egos will get the best of them or they'll just be a dick in person, you know, just like that. What street is he on? 47. 47 yeah. Oh, same all, all those, all those people that you see on TikTok are all, it's all just one block. Really? It's yeah. all 47 street. And uh, you don't, you don't ever compete against one another? Not really. No, not really. I see now you're doing like a race to 100,000 or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, me and Moses. Now, explain oh, yeah. that. To, explain this. So, uh, so, 
Uh, I started the fast flips and the live negotiations. Uh, Moses started doing the fast flips, live negotiations, uh, getting on TikTok. And then he did something sick where he like revolutionized that, where he would do uh, a road to 100,000. So he started off, I don't know what his starting budget was, but it was maybe, it was less than mine. I think he just gave himself a couple hundred bucks. I don't even know if, did he ever complete the challenge? I don't know. No, I don't think he completed it. I think it, his just content all just ended up blending together anyway. But so the other day when I'm like, you know, something like these, I, I, I already started live negotiations. I already started fast flips. I already, I already started this other series, Desperate, desperate Times, times Call for Desperate, desperate Measures, measures where I got to get rid of this fucking watch. I'm like, shit's getting stale. Everybody, everybody just keeps copying my shit anyway. Mm -hmm. So like, let's just do what Moses did. Like not call him out, but like shout him out and be like, like Moses gave me the idea. Fuck it. We're going to do it too. So I, I was like, all right, I have a budget of $5,000 and I bought a watch from Reem. Great girl, by the way, nice girl. And, um, she's one of the ones I was talking about where like just a nice person yeah. on and off camera yeah. too. Um, uh, so I bought a watch from Reem. What did I pay? 36? 36. So I used $3,600 out of my $5,000 budget. And then to kickstart the thing that Moses started, so I said, fuck it. I'm going to go to Moses. And he's going to also feel obligated to buy this thing because it's for a challenge that he started. So I That's went to awesome. him, sold him the watch for 3900 and it was just a sick video. And then he commented on it. And it was like, yo, like, should we do a challenge? And everybody was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then he dropped one yesterday. So now when we go into the city tomorrow, I got $5,300 to spend I'm going to try to turn into like six. Oh, we're coming to you. You're coming for you, bro. Coming That's, for you, Moses. Is he, is, he, is he your best friend in the creation slash watch selling space? You know what's space? weird? Like me and him, we're more so, we were more so just acquaintances, like mm -hmm. just dapping each other up, do business every once in a while. But in the past two months, I'd say we've been doing more business and just, Good. you know, more more speaking to each other. Um, like while we're doing business, or even when we're not, if I see him on the street, like, we'll stop and talk to each other for a little bit longer than we used to. It's so, like worlds collide, man. Like people love seeing yeah. that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially from a content creation standpoint, shit gets boring. Like if you're in yeah. it and it, the ebbs and flows, it gets tough, dude. When yeah, I was just talking low, about this. Like it's not that it's uninspiring, but it's almost like, okay, like how many times can we buy and sell a watch and make a bunch of money on it? It, we got something's got to change here the answer is a lot honestly that's the other yeah. problem is you get in your own head like yeah. the reality is and my analogy i always like to give is your thousandth video is somebody's first so it may feel oh, sure. redundant for you yeah but i found you on your 999th video so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because yeah. it's the, if it's consistent and it works mm -hmm. Keep doing it. Like yeah. it's, um, yeah. Somebody gave me the analogy of like, it's like Seinfeld. Seinfeld ran for as many seasons or whatever, yeah. very successful. Yeah. It was the same shtick over and over. Jeopardy. And over again. They don't change Jeopardy's shit. Jeopardy's like 40 you seasons. You don't got to change anything. If it yeah. works, don't fucking That's stop. That's even something that you me know? and you even like disagree with sometimes. You're like, but we got to change something. I'm like, man, you know what? Let's just stay. Yeah, he's like, of course. Yeah. Like that. Just he's stay like, the course. Just he's like, well, it works. Like everybody loves it. You do what you got to do anyway. We might as well. Yeah. Just... My dad's like that for me. It's like, because yeah. he doesn't give a shit. You know, it's like, the first video was the first video. Yep. We don't know why it blew up on us, but it did. Mm -hmm. And then you start to realize too, like you said, creation is funny in the sense of like something did not exist until you created it. Yeah. That in itself should be eye-opening for you that everything you did yeah. now has an impact on what other people are doing. And it's funny, people always think things just happen. You know, mm -hmm. you watch a movie that was created and it was, it was always a thing, but the reality was it was not always a thing. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to go and make that. Yep. So your videos yeah. and your style of content is the same exact way. So don't waver too much from like what you did mm -hmm. to get to where you want to be or, you know, where you are. I like that. And that's, that's how I am too. Cause yeah. I get in my own head. Cause you want to mm -hmm. do things. You always want to match or do better than your last video. So if we yeah. sold and made yep. a thousand, that's, we got to make yeah. 2000 for this video to do well. Yep. That's not always the case. It's hard. Yeah. It's and hard then we're, then we're like, I'm like, yo, like, should we maybe, you know, incorporate a vlog in one day a week? Like, oh, dude, you're doing so well. Just like, stick it just to stay, what it is. Say the course, bro. Cause again, I'm intrigued because every day is different. Mm -hmm. And it's at the end of the day, it's your personality is the yeah. reason why your content does well. That's, it's yeah. not just hundred If I was a dud and I walked by and I was selling watches and I made the exact same money with the exact same watch, it's not going to perform as well. Mm -hmm. It's you. People want to watch you yeah. interact with, Moses and these other people. Yeah, they're, they're, it's a creating a story. Now they part. They feel like they're part of the family. That's, yeah, you know, you know some. I like. I, that. I, I never always, like that. <laughs> I always say if there's like at least one funny moment in the video because something you do or someone says that gets a win. It has to be funny. It has to be entertaining. Yeah, like, it has to hit authentic. certain notes for me. If I'm gonna sit there and film and edit it, it's like it's got to hit certain notes. And every single one we've done, it always hits. 
It's yeah. funny one moment. There's a one liner. There's a look that's funny. There's like in the in the yeah. Mike Shim video from the other day. You're literally like your ears broken. You're blowing your nose. Like you're purelling your hands. Like just shit like that is just <laughs> yeah. funny. Like I don't know. Just like situational humor. Like shit like that. It it's has to kind of have that. Like now now yeah. it's gonna be part of like your your 23 year old Vukum. I want to see where he's at at 24, 25, 26. It can be the exact that's same sick stuff. To me. Yeah, I think about that sometimes. With yep. that, man. And that's the benefit of doing, of creating content about something. You mm -hmm. know, we're creating content and we're creating what we're doing, whereas you're already doing it and you're yeah. just kind of following along with that yep. journey as it is anyway. So where do you, where do you sort of see yourself in, you know, at, at 30 years old? At 30? Do you think about that a lot? Because I, I did at 23. <laughs> you know something like I, I, uh, my mind kind of races just on all topics. Just, you could ask him, I'm, no yeah. matter what, what it is, it could be anything, but I'm thinking of 50 different things at once. Mm -hmm. So lately I've been trying to like, think about just what am I doing right now? Mm -hmm. And, and just enjoy the moment. But since I've thought of 30, so many times, I, I've thought of so many different outcomes. I don't, I don't know. Like I, I think where I'm heading is if you could sell, right? Sell off. Yeah, uh, sell, eventually sell the brand, I'd say. Sell the brand, but then you think, okay, on the, what? on the other side of the coin, not even, then what? <laughs> it's like the brand is me and your dad. Correct. Faces, our yeah. particular faces and personality. Mm -hmm. So you can't sell that unless you do what Joe Rogan did and you sell and you get a podcast deal, right? To yeah. uh, Spotify, uh, where he got paid out to just keep doing what he did anyway. I mean, I guess you could do that. I mean, the only thing I would see again, a vantage point from my, it would be like starting a consultation business, right? If I want to get to watch, yeah. I go to you, you sell a course online, you start yep. doing seminars. Like uh, you, what, who's going to buy Vukum without Vukum? It doesn't make sense to yep. It's like the reason why barber shops are not able to franchise is because you don't want to go to- Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the other fake version of you, you mm -hmm. want to go to you, I want to yeah. go to my barber, not his friend. Yeah. It doesn't matter if the name is the same. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a hard challenge for you to like sell Vukum. Yeah. But I think the expansion of what you're doing mm -hmm. and I'm assuming your ceiling is so high. Like if you said to yourself, all right, yeah. I'm at the top, max capacity. I don't feel fulfilled. I'm not making enough money, whatever it may be. Now you start going horizontal, but I would assume that like your yeah. vertical trajectory is still yeah. really, really fucking high. Mm -hmm. So like, just stay the course. Stay the course. Right, just sell more and more watches. Mm -hmm. And then you get a team under you and you start teaching them how to sell. You make yeah. profit off them. Well, um, we did just acquire a out of business bank that was in Manalapan, New oh, Jersey. Shit. Yep, so we, we signed the lease on October 15th, I think around there. And right now we're just, you know, putting everything together as far as the security system, building it out. Uh, and then also we have to get approval from the township uh, for retail sales. So that is has been in the works now for a while. We just kind of finished up the security system like two weeks oh, ago. Shit. Two weeks, yeah. Oh, good for you, man. Yep. So now the insurance, the, and the what are they called, Buck? Like the people that come and take pictures and, and send it back to the insurance? The insurers? I, don't, I have no idea. I don't know. The insurance company is getting finalized now. His dad's in the in the bank right now, like mm -hmm. dealing with those that all the logistical end of shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's you know we're gonna try to turn that into like a jewelry exchange oh, in Jersey. Very cool. Because I know okay, so I know in, up north in North Jersey, Paramus, uh, you know those types of areas they have jewelry Woodbridge. exchanges. There's yeah, Woodbridge, jewelry exchange. Woodbridge jewelry exchange. Yeah, so we're gonna, a, there's a, none on. I don't think there's any on route. There's nine. none. There's there's standalone stores, yeah. But yeah so we got like right on Route Nine. Like, we get a big billboard sign that comes on the property. Mm -hmm. Fifty six thousand cars pass it a day, so that's sick. That's all. That's exciting, man. Yeah, yeah. keeps you young. Yeah, good for you. Yep. Bro. Joe, any questions you have? Did I miss anything? What, what's a jewelry exchange? A jewelry exchange is basically um, independent businesses that all operate under one roof, mm -hmm. but they're all independently owned businesses. So you'll have you'll fit like twelve jewelry stores under one roof. Yeah, cool. that's, that's like when sick. you go in and you the, the little boots. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, what it is. Yeah, that's yeah, what we're gonna yeah, put. Yeah, just boots, that. and we got uh five or six off. How many? Five or six? Five or six offices five, in the building, and then there's enough room for I'd say up to twelve to fifteen uh, booths. Oh, good for you, man. Thank oh, you. that's fun. Yeah. Now we ask every podcast guest, and you're young, mm -hmm. twenty three years old, of life. What has been the lowest of your? And it could be anything. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be with Vukum and watch trading. What has been the lowest of your low? And then follow that up with what has been the highest of your high. Uh, it could be a moment in time that you just remember impacted you in, in some capacity. <laughs> um, all right. So lowest of the low, he could vouch for this one, is when I bought a house. Um, so, and it's really weird too, because 
So last, what was that, February? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I bought a house. I started the process on January 1st, 2023. I bought, um, I bought a single family house and buying it was, was a pain in the ass. It was the most stressful thing I ever did. But it was even weirder. After I bought it, th- uh, I moved in. I went to Miami and then I moved in. So I moved in like March 15th, like fully moved in. Mm. But after I bought it, Every the the speed at which I was moving stopped, and it was just me and my thoughts in this fucking house that this huge investment that I just made. Uh, and for some reason, you would think like, oh, you just bought a house. He's probably like super hyped up, super mm-hmm. happy. Like I was very proud of myself of the accomplishment, but I th- I think that all the stress and shit like just got me at one time, and I was like, oh fuck. And you could ask him like. I stopped making, I was posting like once a week. Yeah. I, I was just weird. I, I'd be in the city. I'd be like, like we could be at work and his head was just not there. Just not like there. A lot, like and checked I, out. And I really just can't describe what it was, but something weird was going on where I, I don't know. I don't, I really don't know how to describe You were just in a, in a weird spot. I was in a really in a bad funk and it wasn't from creating content. It wasn't from anything. It was from buying that fucking house. I wouldn't do it again. Well, I, I think <laughs> from, from, from reading you and, and an hour of conversation, I can gather that you think a lot. You go, yeah. Your mind is a mile oh, yeah. an hour and a mile a minute. And what tends to happen is when you actually have some time to think and sit down because you have to, you just bought a fucking house, it all comes at you. Like you don't yeah. take a lot of time to sit with your thoughts at all. So when no. you finally did it, it's like this wave of emotions. You're like, whoa, yep. I don't know how to experience this. That's why yeah. like girls normally are more in tune and, t- mm-hmm. and in touch with themselves because they do it all fucking day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't have like those crashes as much as guys when they sit down and have a mental breakdown. Yeah. And they're like, I don't know what to, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know where I'm going. What's yeah. the point of all this? Why am I so stressed out? Yep. So you finally like dealt with that. And yep. I'm assuming as you grow in eight, you're going to realize like, okay, I can't let things get to that point anymore. I have to yeah. sit in my own thoughts, maybe a little more often. So it doesn't impact me as, as drastically as it once did. Do you meditate? I do now. Um, again, I've been back and forth at, at ages where I didn't think I needed it. I didn't realize that how bad I needed it until mm. you do it. And yeah. you start every day, you realize that like, you think a little bit clearer. Um, so if I can 10 minutes a day, very easy mm-hmm. for me. And it, impacts me so greatly that it's almost like, why am I not doing this every day? People think like, oh, for me, I feel almost guilty. I'm wasting time. You know, I hate the thought of, yeah. I'd be doing yep. something else, but the reality is I'm on my phone for yeah, you're investing. Hour. Right. I'm time, investing yeah. myself in, in my mental health. And that's more important than making money in that moment. So take yeah. a break for 10 minutes a day, sit there, breathe with your own thoughts and you'll probably be able to, you know, figure that stuff out like a little bit that. easier. Yeah. So highs, that. yeah. Transfer over highs to your highs. Anything highs crazy Highs to happening? the highs. Uh, also when I bought the house. Good. It's funny uh, because- Funny the, enough. That's pretty common. And mm-hmm. it's the first time it's been said on this podcast that it's one event because it is. It, sometimes what happens is like this drastic, oh my God, this is the best moment of my life. Mm-hmm. And then it ends and you're like, now yeah. what? You know, it's weird though. I, I would say the highest of my highs has been the past- it wasn't just like that one time frame. The lowest of the lows was that one point in time. It, right. it lasted like two months. It lasted until the end of April. And but the highest of the highs I think has been since I bought the house up until this very moment. It's That's just awesome, been man. Like a constant. Like every day I wake up, I'm just like I'm ready to fuck. Like you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it should be. And, and again, you're not the only person that has said that on the podcast. And maybe it's just that's who we want to have on. People that are in their moment right now. We've had one person. I'm not going to say the name. I caught him at a bad time because he's normally trajectory like this. And I know it's like, it was like a this low, like it wasn't a crash yeah. and burn, but I caught him on a bad day. And I, and it, not that he was wearing it on his face, but I felt it in the room. Yeah. And I was like, fuck man, I wish I waited two months just to get you out of your funk yeah. and then get you at a better time. Yeah. But sometimes you need those conversations. You know what he I might've needed it more than I did. I think, um, with that, yeah, I did, uh, you know, who Ryan Serhant is, yeah, yeah. So, I, I did his podcast while I was in that time period, yeah. and I think you could definitely tell on my face or just in my eyes that something's just off, yeah. yeah. I've been on podcasts too, and like when I was in a lull period, and imposter syndrome creeps in, and now people are asking, Yeah, me about that, yep, how yep. you make content. I'm like, I don't know, man, my videos suck, and you know, like, yeah. in, your, in your head, you're like, Who am I to I even definitely, be saying this? And you know, it's funny too, I, I didn't even know the word imposter syndrome until, uh, I saw, I saw like, I think it was a, a TikTok clip with Gary Vee and, and somebody else. And Gary Vee's like, do you ever get imposter syndrome that last year you like, you just 
were making barely any money and now you're making, you know, a million dollars a month for that guy. Yeah, yeah. And the guy's like, yeah, like I struggle with that a lot. And, and they started talking about it. I'm like, maybe that's what I have. Everybody has it. Like, Everybody that does something <laughs> unorthodox and for themselves. I was your age, maybe 22 when I first heard the word mm-hmm. in a conversation, somebody said it to me. He's like, oh, you have this. And then like he went on and I was like, well, back that up. Like, what did you just say? What was that? Yeah. And it was like imposter syndrome. This is what it is. And for me, it was so eye opening to realize that I'm not alone. So yeah. I was in, I was in an ed tech sales. So I, I had my own startup company and nice. it was a tech company. I'm not techie and I'm not that smart. I hated education. So I was selling it to schools. For me, I was the imposter. I was selling to a group of old white men and women that were trying to convince me that I'm wrong. And I'm sitting in this room and I'm like, I don't really fucking know why yeah. your school needs this technology. Yeah. So I sat there and I'm trying to convince somebody that I could sell salt to a slug. And, I, and maybe I could because yeah. I was passionate about what I was doing. But I dealt with more of that then than I do now because now I'm just more aligned with what I really like doing. And you're probably the same way. You yep. love doing this shit. So when somebody yeah. asks you about a watch, you normally know the answer, but if you don't, you're very humble enough. You're, you're very humble to say, I don't know. And I'm yeah. going to yep. find that out for you. Exactly. And it's weird too. Cause everybody like, like, I'm not going to say like, I don't know what I'm doing. Cause I do. Right. But, uh, you know, just as far as reaching out to, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to describe it. Like they expect me to be the, the all knowing authority and I'm really not like, but, but that's why I've, placed myself with his dad like this way it's just a good team so if i could just jump onto that real quick i don't when, think i said that right but, but you did. i'll tell you what you're trying to say i'll tell <laughs> you exactly what you're trying to say i know where you're going with this you have to know your capabilities and limitations oh yeah that's it yeah that's exactly and, what you're uh, trying to say do it with pride and quality <laughs> do it with pride and quality yeah just everything that, that my dad preaches, preaches to us constantly good, well I, I, it's, it's great that you're listening and sometimes it's easier yep. to listen to somebody that's not your father. Yep. You know what I mean? Like when yeah. your dad says it to you, you're like, dude, whatever. No, that's me. Yeah, that, listen, that's I, literally I, I me. I feel. Oh yeah. yeah. I, he tells me stuff sometimes. I'm just like, like, come on, bro. And it's like, oh yeah. wait, he, fuck, he's right. Like, of course he's right. You have to think about it for a and, second. And, and, and you may have to walk away saying, you know, whatever dad, I'm not going to listen to you. Yeah. And you reflect on it and you'll listen. And yeah. then you'll say, wow, he was right. Yeah, or maybe right. for me, you'll watch a video and say, wow, he was speaking the truth. And yeah. I just didn't want to listen to it. And, exactly. and that's sort of okay. And I think dads know that too, mm-hmm. that as a son, you're kind of ignoring him, but you'll still get the message. Yeah, at so. the end of the day, the, the respect is there and it's like, okay, you have to respect your elders and your elders knowledge yeah. of spaces and what they yeah. know. And that's really it. And I, I, the, my, one of my favorite quotes is from Rick Rubin. And he says, know that no one knows everybody's opinion is as good as mine. And the reason I love that so much, especially as like a creative, when somebody says to you like, and you're like, I don't really know. I'm not the uh, end all be all. Nobody is, you mm-hmm. know, like you're yeah. even his dad who knows so much about the space. Yeah. He still feels like, I don't fucking know. Somebody has to figure it out and why not be you? You know, like so that. we'll end it on there, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, share all that good stuff. That's it for today. Thank you guys for coming on. Thanks um, for having us. Thank yeah. you. Cheers. Cheers.